Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of My Bucket List Day. So, are they all junk? Well, let's get into that. First off, I just want to start off by saying the RV show ended about a little over a week ago. And I'm sure you guys have been inundated with all of the other YouTube channels out there talking about the different RVs they saw, showing you the floor plans, showing you all the cool features and things like that. And uh, I thought, I'm not going to bore you guys with another video like that. I had planned on doing more of those, but then after going through the show, I had kind of an aha moment. I kind of had this epiphany. But uh, I'm going to dive in deep and kind of flip upside down the RV industry. And uh, I'm going to do it in a way that I think is going to help educate and inform you guys. And that's always my goal, is to educate and inform and in some cases inspire you guys to come on out of the house get out there and just explore new things and kind of take a risk and live your bucket list stuff and that's always been the purpose of this channel is to educate and inform you guys so you can make the right decision whether you're going to do rv stuff upgrades maintenance things of that nature i'm not an expert in any of this stuff but after doing this for a while and having kind of a mechanical background most of my life, I have some insights that helps you guys. And uh, many of you have already responded and said some of my videos are helpful to them. So I hope this is also going to be one of those videos that is helpful to you as well. Well, as you can probably tell, I'm not in the RV. i am actually got the RV parked somewhere and um, house sitting and dog sitting for... Uh, a friend of mine that I've had uh, for over 30 years. In fact, you've met Brian. Uh, he's been on a couple trips with us uh, and up west and a few other places. So let's get into this. So the RV show, as I mentioned, just ended a little over a week ago. And when Joe and I were reviewing all of these different RVs and interviewing all these different people, we realized that there's been a shift in the RV industry. And while we saw it last year, um, we really didn't see the impact on it uh, until this year. It really kind of dawned on us what's going on. So first, let me start by saying I'm not going to mention any brands because the last thing I need is those brands to come after me and sue me or anything like that because I'm saying they're a junk brand. So I'm going to do some generalizations here. So I usually break this up in two categories. There are the drivable units and the towable units. And in the drivable units, you've got the class A, B, and C, and the towables, of course, you've got a travel trailer and a fifth wheel. So we're going to start with the towables. So of all the units we looked at, and they're all represented there at the show, I shouldn't say all, 95%, 98% of them, we're all represented at the show. And as Joe and I and other friends of ours were going through all these different RVs, we picked up on a common theme. And that is they're all slapping these things together very rapidly and they're using junk material in doing so. The cabinetry, some of the components, uh, some of the way they assemble, or the, I should say not the way, the fasteners that they're using to assemble things, it's just garbage. And uh, with the exception of one brand in the towables, we couldn't find any that were any good. And I'm not paid or I'm not sponsored or I'm not endorsed or anything by this brand, but Brinkley is the only company out there that builds a quality product. They not only use quality materials, uh, their assembly process is a much higher quality than any other brands that I've ever been on a tour with. And I have another video out there I talked about all the tours I went on when I was in Elkhart and went on a whole bunch of them. And Brinkley does it a lot differently. They test along the way. Anyway, I won't get into all of that. But they use quality products, quality components, uh, quality fasteners, and they just build a better unit. The fit and finish on a Brinkley is far superior than any other travel trailer or fifth wheel out on the road. In fact, you'll notice on a Brinkley, there's very little trim. 
Now they don't talk about that much, which I think they should, but you'll notice along the ceiling there, there's no molding across the ceiling between where the ceiling and the wall meets. The reason is, is the fit and finish is so precise, so tight, they don't need it. Everyone else puts molding up there because they're hiding the huge gaps between a wall and a ceiling or a cabinet and the wall. So that that's why they have all that molding there. And along the floor, when you have that linoleum floor or hot, whatever wood floor or whatever covering that they're using, all of them will put all the trim along the floor to cover those gaps. Again, on a Brinkley, they don't have any of that because the fit and finish is that good. When you look at their cabinetry, by the way, their cabinetry is residential, higher end residential quality. It's not particle board. And it's certainly not like a lot of RV manufacturers. They take regular board and they wrap it in a, a paper, um, like a wallpaper material, which our particular rig is just paper over cheap wood. Uh, Brinkley uses real wood and the finish in Brinkley is painted with real paint. In fact, they use Sherwin-Williams paint that you can go buy at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever else, and they paint them there at the factory. So they're very, very high quality. So all the other manufacturers use cheap wood. They use particle board. They don't dovetail the drawers and cabinets. They use cheap hardware putting them together. The drawer slides are cheap. They fall apart easily. Uh, as all of you, like me, has had to replace many drawer slides because they continue to break or fall apart. It's just crap material. There's another brand out there that builds a pretty good quality unit. However, I don't like their fit and finish as well, um, but it's Ar Arctic Fox. They do build a quality frame and they assemble it very, very well. Um, but in my opinion, they could really use a lot of improvement in their fit and finish, especially in the cabinetry. Um, but that's an easy thing for them to fix if they want to. So again, all of the fifth wheels, all of the travel trailers we looked at out there, all of them were garbage. I would not recommend anyone buying any one of those brands, any one of those products out there. We're gonna talk about at the end of this video of why this is an issue and why it's gonna to continue to be an issue unless we do something about it. Now let's move into the drivables. Those are the class A, B, and Cs. Now, as many of you know, before I got into the fifth wheel, I had a Class A. We had a, an American Eagle that we used to drive around, and I loved it. And that thing was solid. It worked well, didn't break down, uh, high quality in the cabinetry, high quality in the fit and finish. Everything was fantastic. Now, mine was a 2006, so it was fantastic. And it was before we had to do def in the engines and things like that. So, I have no complaints with that. However, when we went to tour them this year, we were really disappointed in the fit and finish and the quality and the materials that they're using. And uh, not only them, but every other Class A we saw, with the exception of the higher end ones, the Newell's, the Prevost, those, their fit and finish was fantastic. The material they use is quality, but let's face it, those are half a million and up to millions of dollars to get in one of those. So that's not in a lot of our price range. However, they continue to carry forward over the years the quality that they've always had in the past. You gotta pay that much for quality? <laughs> I don't think so, but they have continued that. So they're continuing to stay at the high end. Now let's talk about a Class B. I love Class Bs. They are cool, they're great, they're nimble, they're versatile, you can go anywhere with them. Uh, I've got a lot of friends that are driving around in Class Bs and you see lots of videos out there of uh, single or solo females or males going out there and just having a blast in those things. However, we found even in the Class Bs, the quality has just dropped tremendously in those. We've also noticed that the materials that they're using are really, really crappy. We know why this is happening, and again, we're gonna talk about this at the end of the video, but people are continuing to buy them. Now, I will say Class Bs also went way up in price in the last couple of years because of the popularity of them. And I think 
that's kind of a shame as well and we're going to talk about that we at towards the end of the video as well and then finally we come to the class c's the class c's are kind of two categories there's what i call the entry level class c's and then you have the super c's whether it's a super c or the entry level or the baseline class c with the exception of one they were all junk again this is just our opinions but when we opened a cabinet or we opened a drawer or we looked really close at it we saw gaps we saw cheap material we saw in fact on one class c that they're asking four hundred thousand dollars for this thing and you open a drawer and you tap it and it's that thin paper material or plywood or it's it's a step above cardboard and i'm like are you kidding me i understand why they're doing it but it's still not right um, in fact, there's another brand, I won't mention the brand, that is a Super C. And uh, while their fit and finish was a little bit better, the quality of the materials they were using was not that great. Uh, but they did a better job of it. But when we opened the basement doors and crawled and looked in some of the storage, and we saw how poorly things were assembled down there, welds that weren't completed, um, things like... Things like very sharp edges uh, around a beam where there's a wiring harness there. Again, the wiring harness not even in a loom, but just open wires hanging there by this sharp edge. And as we all know, these rigs are bouncing down the road. What's going to happen to those wires as they're chafing along that piece of metal sitting there? I'm like, that's just a disaster waiting to happen. And how they would let that go? It's just poor quality, very poor quality. And yeah, maybe my standard's a little higher than most, but I look for these things because I don't want to be broke down on the side of the road. I don't want to be spending all my time repairing an RV. I want to buy an RV and go out and play and have fun. I think that's most of us out there, that's what we want to do. Why are all these companies doing this? Well, this is just, again, my opinion or our opinion as we all talked about this over a couple drinks. We believe what's going on is this is a i want to say a hangover from covid as we all know covid put everybody inside and we had supply issues so people were driving around manufacturers were driving around trying to get all the parts that they could to build these things and they realized they couldn't get them so they started putting cheaper stuff in and poor quality this poor quality construction because they couldn't get staff because they had to lay off a bunch of people. Then when they hired people back in, they probably didn't have the, the training that they uh, should have when assembling these things. Whatever it might be, I'm not gonna say who did what. The quality went way down. The product or the materials and components that they're putting in these RVs went way down. And the manufacturers learned something. They had such a, a rise during COVID because people want to get out of the house and people were buying this garbage and the manufacturers made more money and they said to themselves huh they're still buying it why don't we keep doing it that way and make even more margin so they weren't incentivized to build a better product or go back to a better quality like they did before now what i learned on my eagle it was like i said a 2006 um, this is pre the 2008 recession. After 2008, American started dropping in quality. Again, that didn't happen to me, um, but they were acquired by the Rev Group. I don't remember when, but when they were acquired by the Rev Group, I believe then cost became a factor for them and margins became a factor and they're building not the quality they once had. I gotta say the one I had was, it was great rarely had i had any repairs i had to do on it other than the simple maintenance things like that that i had to do but today quality is not there the material they're using is not there um and I, that i say that true for all of the other class a's that we viewed at the show with the exception of the other ones that i said are higher end now because getting back to why are they doing this because us consumers are out there continuing to buy 
these RVs and excited to get out on the road, they're continuing to build garbage because they can get away with it. And my advice to you guys is don't buy any more of these things. If you want a good quality, or I should say good, a better quality RV, go back to pre-2018 and buy a used rig. But always get an inspection before you buy a used rig. In fact, you should do that for all rigs. But get it inspected because a lot of times people trade in their problems uh, for something else and then you're stuck with it. And you cannot trust a dealer to take care of whatever those problems are. In fact, I know in a particular situation, as you all know, I'm going through the problem with broken frame. Um, I know of somebody who traded their RV in with a broken frame. The dealer knew it was broken and turned around, cleaned it up, and sold it without repairing the frame. Knowing it was broken, so the person who bought it now has just purchased a rig with a broken frame. I know this factually, this did happen because I've talked to the person who now has bought that RV and has that broken rig. So dealers, especially the big dealers that are nationwide, many of them, they're vultures. They don't care. They just want to make a buck. I personally would never sell my RV in the condition that it's in. If I could ever get it fixed, if it's even fixable, I will do that before I ever trade it in or try to sell it again. I don't think mine's fixable, but we'll let the inspection tell us what's going on, and that's another video. So, back to the junk we saw at the RV show. It's got us to the point, we may not even go back to an RV show next year. We may skip it completely, because we are so disappointed, um, with the exception of a couple RV manufacturers, and we just we saw all these people making purchases and getting excited and that's great we'd love to see people get excited about getting in the rv but when i see what they're buying and the problems i know they're going to be having down the road it's just it's a shame so my message to all of you send a message to the rv industry stop buying the new stuff tell them no more we're not going to put up with this anymore you want the RV industry to put out a better product before you're going to buy them again. So it's up to us as consumers to push back on the RV industry and say, stop. Stop delivering crap. Build a better product. Put better quality in it. Put better components in it. And we'll start buying your stuff again. So if you're in the market for buying an RV, I would highly recommend you take a look at a unit prior to COVID, so 2018 and earlier. But get it inspected. There are inspectors all over the place, certified inspectors, I highly recommend. In fact, I have a couple friends here from Blue Ox RV Inspections. I highly recommend them take a look at the rig before you do it. And they will travel to wherever you are within reason um, to do that inspection. But I'll leave a link below, here they are right here but I'll leave a link below on how to get a hold of them and they can inspect the RV for you. I recommend you don't buy a new unit because anything from 2019 up to even 2024s they're garbage. They're putting out garbage. So send a message to that RV industry. No more. We're not buying your crap. Hopefully they'll get the message and start delivering and building a better product. Who knows? They might even get up to the quality of a Brinkley. That would be awesome if they all built to that quality. So another thing I want to touch on just briefly is you know, we did notice at the RV show this year that the prices have come down on pretty much all RVs across the board. With the exception of Class Bs, we didn't see any reduction. We saw most of them went up in price. Again, I'm not an expert in Class B, so those of you out there that uh, are watching and in the Class B world, let me do know if you saw the same thing that the prices didn't really go down at all for those um, I could be wrong on that so I'd love to hear from you on that one but everything else I noticed in class A's class C's travel trailers all the towables the prices came down quite a bit um, the RV industry isn't selling as much as they used to um, I think they thought it was because of the inflation that we're going through or let's face it I think we're in a recession right now even though the experts say we're not. 
and I'm not sure I'm trusting some of these experts, but I think we are. Um, interest rates are still ridiculous, so you guys make that decision on your own. I'm not an economist here, so don't follow me on that. Um, but we did notice the decrease in prices, and I think the RV industry says, oh, because of inflation, uh, we got to lower the prices here because sales aren't there. Not thinking, even for a second, that maybe the sales aren't there because the quality is so bad. Like myself, there are a lot of RV YouTubers out there that are talking about the poor quality of RVs that they're experiencing as well. So hopefully soon, the industry will get the message. Well, I hope this was informative to you guys. Again, I'm not an expert in the RV industry, nor, and nor do I ever claim to be an expert in manufacturing. But I do know quality when I see it and I feel it. And I think most of you do as well. You go and look at something and say, hey, that's pretty good quality, or that's a piece of shit. We can all tell. Um, so don't get fooled by the lipstick they put on a lot of this stuff. Look a little closer and you'll see what I'm talking about. Hope this was helpful. Hope this was informative. And that's why I'm doing this is to hopefully help you all in making decisions and fixing things and going places and things like that is to help educate and inspire. Um, so that's it. I appreciate you all tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe and ring that little bell let you know when I'm putting on another video. And I want you to make it a great bucket list day. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.